Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. This is Kevin. And in this week's video, I'm going to attempt one of the most challenging topics of my career to simplify for you, licensing, when it comes to Cisco Unified Communications. I used to joke with my students years ago that Cisco should have another certification called the CCLP, the Cisco Certified Licensing Professional, because traditionally, Cisco licensing has been very complicated and convoluted. Now, admittedly, Cisco's come a long way since those days, but some people would argue that it's still fairly complicated. Now, on the CL Core Blueprint, you're told that you need to know about two different types of licensing. Seems simple enough. You need to know about smart licensing and flex licensing. However, under smart licensing, there are two categories. Under one category, there are four options. Under the other category, there are two options. Under flex licensing, we've got four options. That's a grand total of 10 different options we have to pick from when we're trying to decide, how do we license this thing? Well, that's my challenge. And at the end of this video, if you think I've been successful, do me a favor and give me a like, click that thumbs up button down below, and also subscribe so you don't miss any of our weekly content. Now join me as we discuss Cisco licensing for a Cisco Unified Communications Network. One of the topics Cisco says we need to know about for the CL Core exam is how licensing works for Cisco Unified Communications. And they give us two different licensing models that we should know about for the exam. And these are both different from the traditional licensing model that I used to use. In years past, when I would buy software like Cisco Unified Communications Manager, it would come in a cardboard box, there would be a DVD with the software inside, and there would also be a card inside of that box that had what was called a PAC, a product authorization key. And I would take that key along with the MAC address of the server on which I was going to install the software. I would go to Cisco's licensing portal. I would enter both the PAC and the MAC address, and that would generate my license. So that means that the license was tied to the MAC address of the server. That created some problems for me because in a training environment where I'm rebuilding machines all the time, I couldn't just easily reuse my license because when I created another virtual machine, it would have a different MAC address and suddenly my license didn't work. So I had to go change the MAC address of my VMs to make it match the MAC address of the server that originally had the license. It was a bit of a challenge. And that was just in a lab environment. Imagine in a large enterprise environment where we're trying to keep track of all the different licensing on all the different servers we have. Now, the two newer licensing models Cisco wants us to know about are smart licensing and the even newer flex licensing. Let's talk about each one beginning with smart licensing. And smart licensing breaks down into two different types. First, we have Cisco User Connect Licensing or CUCL. And this is going to be per user licensing for an individual application such as Cisco Unity Connection. In other words, we're not licensing a user to use Communications Manager and Unity Connection and I'm in presence and on and on. So it's not just per user licensing, it's per user licensing per Cisco Unified Communications application. The other type of smart licensing is also per user licensing but this is for a bundle of Cisco Unified Communications applications. Let's take a look at these in more detail, beginning with the CUCL, the Cisco User Connect Licensing. There are four different types of licensing that fall under Cisco User Connect Licensing. There is Essential, we have Basic, there's Enhanced, and we have Enhanced Plus. And there are lots of subtle differences, but let me give you some of what I consider to be the high points when it comes to the differences between these different models. First, let's consider some of the endpoints supported by these different models. If you go with the Essential model, you can support analog phones if you have FXS ports in your Cisco gateways. You can support faxes and do fax relay. And they specify a couple of models of Cisco IP phones. And that might be a bit restrictive for some users. If we go up to Basic, that adds on a couple of additional phone models, the 7811 and the 7821. But if you want even more flexibility, you probably want to consider Enhanced or Enhanced Plus, which gives us support for all Cisco user devices. How many phones or how many devices can we support? Well, in all cases except Enhanced Plus, a single user can be associated with a single phone or a single device. However, with Enhanced Plus, we might have a user that's associated with a couple of phones. So we get a little bit of extra flexibility if we go with Enhanced Plus. 
If we have soft clients running as apps on our tablets or smartphones, we're not able to use Cisco Jabber on essential or basic licensing, but we can with Enhanced or Enhanced Plus. Now, all of them are going to give us support for Cisco Unified Communications Manager. That's the heart and soul of our Unified Communications environment. But if we want licensing for something like Cisco Unity Connection, because this is per user licensing per application, it's going to be an add-on. We'll have to add on licensing for our voice messaging solution. For Cisco Expressway to give us firewall traversal, that's not even an option for Essential or Basic, but it is for Enhanced and Enhanced Plus. Let's take a look at one more, Cisco WebEx Conferencing. This is going to be another application, so it's another add-on to all of these different license options. Now, that's Cisco User Connect Licensing, or CUCL. Let's contrast that with Cisco Unified Workspace Licensing, or C-U-W-L. A lot of people pronounce that as cool licensing. And it breaks down into two types, standard and meetings. Remember, this is per user licensing still, but it's per user licensing for a bundle of applications. And a single user can be associated with multiple phones without taking up additional licensing. Cisco Jabber can be run on our smart devices. Of course, we have licensing for Cisco Unified Communications Manager, but we also, without doing an add-on, we also have licensing for Cisco Unity Connection. For Cisco Expressway, we get that as well. But for Cisco WebEx Conferencing, that's one of the distinctions between standard and meetings. It's an add-on for standard, but it comes with the meetings option. So those are two different options that fall under smart licensing. Let's consider the even newer option of flex licensing. Here, as many software companies are doing today, we subscribe to the licensing. It's not a one-time purchase. It's a subscription, and we can dynamically adjust that subscription based on our particular needs at the moment. So we've got a subscription-based plan, but one of the main things that makes Flex licensing attractive is that it's going to help us migrate to the cloud. Because what we're talking about with smart licensing is licensing for on-premise unified communication solutions. We've got Unified Communications Manager, we've got Cisco Unity Connection, we've got IAM and Presence, we've got Cisco Expressway all running at our site. But what if I start to use some of Cisco's cloud solutions? For example, instead of having a Communications Manager on site, we could go with Cisco HCS, which stands for Hosted Collaboration Solution, and that runs in the cloud. We're not managing a local communications manager server. Cisco also acquired another cloud collaboration company called BroadCloud, and we might go with Cisco BroadCloud. We might go with a hybrid solution where some things live on-premises and some things live in the cloud. How do we handle licensing in that environment? Well, the great news with Flex licensing is that we can buy a license and it can transfer from on-premise to cloud-based solutions. And there are a few options for the Flex plans. If we want the most flexibility, we might want to go with the Cisco Enterprise Agreement. This is going to enable all of the users in our company to place calls and to set up meetings. Of course, there's going to be a cost for that flexibility. To potentially save some money, we might want to consider the Cisco Collaboration Flex Plan Active User Meetings. This is going to allow anybody in the enterprise to host a meeting, but if only five people host a meeting, we're only paying for those five people. We're not paying for everybody in the enterprise to have that feature. We sort of pay as we go. But we're allowing anybody in the enterprise to start that meeting. That's a little bit different than Cisco Collaboration Flex Plan named user. Here, we specify which users are going to be able to host a meeting, and we pay for them. Or maybe we want to pay for a license that will support our peak number of meetings. We might want to consider the Cisco Collaboration Flex Plan Concurrent Agent. Here, we take a look at how many meetings are going on during the busiest hour of the day. In other words, the hour that has the most simultaneous meetings. And we pay for a number of meeting agents, users that can set up the meeting. We pay for those users which should handle our busiest hour. And I realized there were several different options that we could purchase, uh, 10 in total. Let's summarize those. We first talked about smart licensing, and that was going to be great for on-premise. And we had two types. The first type was Cisco User Connect licensing, and there were four options. Essential, Basic, Enhanced, and Enhanced Plus. 
And Cisco User Connect licensing, we said, gave us per user licensing for individual applications in a Cisco Unified Communications solution. So if we wanted to have, in addition to Cisco Unified Communications Manager, if we wanted to have Cisco Unity Connection, that was an add-on that we would pay extra for to license users for that platform. The other smart licensing option was Cisco Unified Workspace Licensing, or COOL if you prefer. And there were two options there. There was standard and meetings. And the meetings gave us built-in WebEx conference support. Well, that was an add-on with standard. However, if we want to start migrating towards the cloud, we might want to consider flex licensing. And we had four types based on how we're going to be setting up meetings. We could license the entire enterprise where anybody could set up a meeting at any time. And we didn't pay a different amount based on the number of concurrent meetings or the number of users that started a meeting. We just said, anybody's allowed to set up as many meetings as they want. But if we want to save some money, we might want to consider one of the other options we discussed. The active user meetings, named user, or concurrent agent. And that's a look at the smart licensing and flex licensing options for Cisco Unified Communications. 